All right, if you have your Bibles, please turn to Exodus uh, 14. We're going to be looking at Exodus chapter 14, verses 10 through 15. So if you have your Bibles, Exodus 14, we're going to begin in verses 10 all the way to, uh, to 15. Uh, if you, on your way in, if you did not get one of these flyers, uh, one of these uh, Share the Love Summer Activities flyers, really want to encourage you to grab one on your way out. Um, there is a, a lot of things going on this summer, and so I hope that you take some time um, to uh, just get a little break and get, you know, and go on vacation with your family, but don't take the whole summer, okay? Um, some of you, you know, is like, we'll see you, Pastor, we'll see you in September. I'm like, okay, you're taking the whole summer? I mean, you must have a really nice job. So it's good to take time off. The girls are actually out of town today, uh, but, but um, you know, stay connected, is, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And uh, just a couple of things. Yesterday, we had a, an awesome day uh, sharing the love uh, with uh, one of our very own, um, and so we did a lot of yard work and, you know, mowing and all of that. Um, that was fun. We had about 30, 40 people showed up to that. Um, next, uh, yeah, let's give it up, man. Well, I'm sure you'll, uh, you'll get to see video and pictures in the days ahead. But uh, next, uh, on June 9th, we have summer camp, so be praying for our students. We are taking 30 students to camp, so I mean, I'd say that's something that we should uh, be thankful for. Um, we also have once a month for June, July, and August, we're going to have a warrior men's breakfast. And so if you want to connect with some guys, um, just uh, we'd love for you to, uh, to show up to those June 17th, uh, July 29th, and then August 26th. And then there's a bunch of other things that we're going to be doing. Um, uh, June 30th, we're going to, uh, we have about six, 7,000 people that show up to the air show. And I figure, you know, they're showing up to our backyard. Uh, why don't we share the love with them? So we're going to be involved in that. Uh, and then the first two weeks in July, July, you know, let's see, it's, it actually begins June 30th all the way to the 15th. Um, we're going to be in the community, just be in the hands and feet of Jesus. And so we would love more to come on that, but make sure that you stay plugged in. Lots of good things happening. Again, this will be on the newsletter, uh, the uh, electronic newsletter that we send out every week. It will also be in paper in the back. And uh, we have a digital copy. If you want me to text you one, we can send you a PDF. But make sure that you stay connected. All right, so uh, Exodus 14 is where you should be. The title of the message today is Face Your Fear. Face Your Fear. And what I, what I want to do, I'm going to ask you a little favor, okay? I need you to help me out with this message. I need you to, um, to think about or to filter the words that I say, the verses that we read, by thinking about what the greatest, not the greatest, the, the thing that has been bothering you, that has been consuming your mind and heart in the last few days. Okay, so I want you to filter the, the message, the verses that we're going to talk about today by the thing that has been kind of, that has been keeping you up at night. Okay, the thing that's been, you know, maybe it's a fear, maybe it's a, a worry that you have, maybe it is it just a, you know, I, I don't know, it could be a number of things. It could be a fear about making the next sale. And you're like, man, I just don't know if I'm, we're going to meet our quota. You know, we did it last year, but I'm not really sure about this year. And, and that brings you a little bit of anxiety, and it's okay. And so whenever we read the verses here in a little bit, I want you to filter the message by that thing that has been capturing your mind, okay? It, it may be a fear about a decision, a decision that you're about to make. And this decision is going to affect your family. This decision is going to affect your future, and it bring, may bring a little bit of, oh, you know, I don't know, are we making the right decision? You know, do we, do we stay? Do we leave? Do, do we say something? Do we not? Okay? Uh, it may be a fear that has to do with your health. So I have family that's going through some things right now, and it's, um, you know, it's really hard. When they tell you it's cancer, and when they tell you, look, you can do chemo or you can do radiation, and, and you look and you do the research, and you're thinking, Lord, I, I don't know which one, and... And so it may be a decision about that. It may be that the fear that you have is it has to do with health. And it may not be your health. It may be a, a, a relative. And um, you know, you're thinking the procedure is complicated. 
don't really know what life is going to look like in the next six months or even longer. Maybe, I, I don't know, you fill in the blank, okay? So, so I'm going to deliver for you. I'm going to do my best to deliver a message that will encourage you and inspire you and challenge you, but you've got to deliver for yourself, okay? And so I want you to just take a moment and think this through. Lauren, what's one thing that I have really been given a lot more attention to than I should? Okay, it may be a fear of rejection. I wonder if I do this, what are they going to think of me? Maybe for me, it's uh, performance. You know, I always struggle with that. And, and it, it's, it may not be, am I good enough? It may be, you know, I did it a year ago. Can I replicate it today? You know, I know that I've, I've, I'm able to, to, you know, I made the sale, I made the thing, I made the speech, and I, whatever, but can I do it again? And so that's what I need your help with. Most people have to learn to cope with fear. This is not something that just, that we're born, yet like just intuitively, that just comes out, we just, no, most of us, I'd say all of us, okay, if I, if I want to be daring uh, and bold, most people have to learn to cope with fear. Now, I've been told that when, when we're born, when we're babies, just little babies, um, psychologists say that Babies usually have only, they're born only with two fears, okay? The fear of falling and the fear of loud noises, okay? And I think that's true, right? Like if you yell at a, a little baby immediately, ah, you know, they're afraid of loud noises. Every other fear is something that we learned, okay? There's about 2,500 fears out there. And people fear all kinds of things, spiders, public speaking, you know, I, I know that, you know, in my own children, like I've seen it as they've grown. When they were little kids, man, they were not afraid to be the show person, the showman in front of everybody and do a little, you know, like a little karaoke or whatever. And as they grow, they become a little bit more self-aware. And they're like, oh, I'm not doing that anymore. I'm not a child anymore. Okay. And so as we grow, we learn some fears. And, and it could be, you know, fear of betrayal because of what you've been through. I know people that um, fear balloons popping, okay? Like I know someone that I love dearly and, um, and she, like if we have balloons and like if, the, if our students are playing with the balloons, like this person, it will freak her out if one of those balloons pops. And just the thought of, of teenagers just playing with balloons, it's like, no, I can't handle the anxiety, okay? So like any fear, right? Uh, it could be uh, the fear of having a booger, you know, hanging out your nose. Any of you, any of you fear that? <laughs> you know, if you see me before I get on stage going like this, you know, you know why, <laughs> you know? Like, I feel like something is there, but I don't know, you know? And it's like, it's really hard, you know, because you got to, you know, everybody's watching. And so, um, but it's a legitimate fear. Um, they say that a third of Americans struggle with, I'm talking about major clinical anxiety and depression, not just a little anxiety that sometimes some of us face, but I'm talking about major anxiety, major uh, depression. A third of Americans um, struggle with this, and I think it's rooted ultimately in some of these fears, okay? And so what I want to do today, I really believe that if every other fear, other than the fear of falling and the fear of um, uh, loud noises is learned, I really believe that then a lot of these fears can be unlearned. And so what I want to do is I want to give you three facts about facing your fear, okay? So let's get into it. Exodus 14, verse 10. It says this. As Pharaoh approached, the people of Israel looked up and panicked, okay? If you've ever panicked, if you've ever had a panic attack, if you've ever like, holy cow, what am I going to do? Okay, then you can understand where the Israelites are coming from. Pharaoh's approaching, the people of Israel looked up, they panicked when they saw the Egyptians overtaking them. They cried out to the Lord, uh, verse 11, and they said to Moses, why did you bring us out here to die in the wilderness? Were not there enough graves for us in Egypt? What have you done to us? Why did you make us leave Egypt? Verse 12, didn't we tell you this would happen while we were still in Egypt? We said, we said, 
Leave us alone. This is what they're saying to Moses. Leave us alone. Let us be slaves to the Egyptians. It is better to be a slave in Egypt than a, help me out, than a what? And a corpse, a corpse in the wilderness. So a little bit of the context, okay? The Israelites had just escaped the, the hands of the Egyptians. They've been slaves for over 100 years, over 400 years, excuse me. And, um, and so they're, they're going to the promised land, okay? They had seen the, the hand of God in miraculous ways. And they hit, you know, they, they see the Red Sea, and so they're like, oh, we can't go any further. And here comes the Egyptian army, the most powerful army in the world. And so put yourself in their shoes, okay? Or their sandals, if, um, you know, dad jokes, sorry. If my girls were being here, like, they would be going like this, dad, please don't embarrass me anymore. So put yourself in their shoes, right? Because they had no, I said sandals, because they have no, in case you, explain it to the person next to you, okay? <laughs> please help me out here. Show me some love. Thank you. You know, bless you, whoever that was. <laughs> but for, ser- for, uh, for real, seriously, um, think about it. Imagine the sound of the horses and the chariots getting louder and louder. The cloud of dust, okay, as the Egyptian army is getting closer, and they're, they're full throttle coming at, at you, okay? And the question, of course, is how do you manage fear when you feel like that? You have the Red Sea on the one hand, and you have the Egyptian army coming after you. And for you, the Egyptian army may be a boss. The Egyptian army may be a sickness. It may be a financial situation. I don't know what it it is, okay? But this is why I'm asking you for help, okay? As we read this scripture, you got to fill in the blank. Verse 10 is clear. It says, as Pharaoh approached, the people of Israel looked up, and they what? Say it, church. And they? Say it one more time. They what? Panicked. They panicked, Okay. So three facts, three facts. Number one, fear always chooses you. Fear always chooses you. You don't have to go looking for it, okay? If you don't choose faith, fear chooses you. You don't have to, like it will come, it will hunt you down. And it's a natural thing. Some of us think that, oh, am I the only one? Am I weird because I'm dealing with this? And the truth is, no, it's, it's a natural thing. It is for, it's your and my default setting. Now, if you're taking notes, I really encourage you to write this down. Fear always comes despite the miracles of the past. Write that down. Your fears will come despite of, of the things that you've seen God do in your life. This, despite of all the miracles and all the, 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 like you've seen it, you've seen God at work in your life and fear will still come after you. Okay, so write that down. Fear always comes despite the miracles of the past. So I went and I looked at this story and I went backwards, okay, to the weeks and months before this event takes place, okay? So they're on the way out to the promised land. They hit the, the, the Red Sea. And so I went back a few months, a few weeks before, and I counted... I, basically, I counted all of the miracles that Moses and the Israelites encounter firsthand, like they saw with their own eyes. Did you know that there were at least 29 recorded miracles, 29 recorded miracles, where Moses and the Israelites, they were like, they were there and they saw it, they saw the hand of God with their own eyes and they could feel it, touch it, they could hear it, they saw it happening. Let me mention a couple of them, Okay. So remember the um, Moses staff? Remember how Moses staff, remember how God turned it into a what? Help me out. A snake, right? Like, like he was coming before Pharaoh, let my people go. And to show God, to show Pharaoh and the Egyptians God's power, God says, I'm going to turn this stick, right? A dead piece of wood, and I'm going to turn it into a snake, a, a living thing. I mean, only God can do that, right? If I had a stick and God could do something like that, you'd be like, whoa, something special is going on, okay? So um, what else? The Nile River, you know, turned it into blood. Um, and, and all the plagues, and I'm not gonna go over all of them, but the fourth plague, I don't know if you remember it, it was uh, the plague that had all the flies. Remember that one? They were, the Bible says that the Egyptians, I mean, there were so many flies, millions of flies everywhere the egyptians would be eating and a fly would go in their mouth okay they go up their nose like i know it's gross i'm sorry right before lunch you know thank you pastor alex i'm you know i'm helping you i'm helping you here okay so but there were flies everywhere except 
in Goshen. There was this little place where the Israelites were located, where they were living. The flies would not penetrate that place. Now, I don't know about you, but I would be freaking out. if, Like, there are flies everywhere. I mean, you, like, I mean, that's just how gross, right? But to know that God's people were protected, I would ask the question, who has the power to control? I've been, I've been, um, we have a, a lot of, I don't know why, but in the summer, we have these huge flies that come into the house. Anytime we let the puppy out, you know, two or three of them come in. And I guess it's not something I'm used to. Um, but yesterday, man, I was trying to watch a movie. I, you know, family's gone. I'm just having, you know, at peace, just enjoying life. And this little fly, it was demon-possessed, just all over the place. And I was just hitting the thing. People, if you watch me, you laugh, you know. Um, but who controls, who has the power to control flies and to see that there are flies all over the land except for in Goshen? because that's where God's people live. To me, I would say, man, that would, that's pretty awesome, right? The Israelites experienced all, you know, darkness over the land, the death of the firstborn, like all the Egyptians firstborn were, uh, died except for the Israelites. And yet, despite all of the miracles, in that moment, they were freaking out. Why is that? Because... If you don't choose faith daily, sometimes it's even on a just a minute-by-minute minute basis, fear will come after you, it chooses you. Fear will always come despite the miracles that you have personally experienced in your past. And there are so many examples of giants of the faith. These are people that are like, I, man, I want to be like them, right? Like giant, people who walked, when you think of Adam and Eve, right? They walked with God, you know, they were afraid. The Bible says that when they found themselves, that they were naked, they hid behind a tree. You look at Abraham when he was, they were finding out about his wife. Uh, uh, he like, he, he, he freaked out and he lied about her. You look at even Moses, right? Moses in the, um, the burning bush experience, God says, hey, I want you to go back to Egypt and deliver my people from the, from the, the uh, slavery and the, the, the abuse of the the." Egyptians, Moses is like, no, I left. And I, I don't know if you remember the story. Like Moses killed an Egyptian and that's why he left. He escaped Egypt. And he's like, no, I'm wanted for murder. I don't want to go back there. I'm, 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 I'm Egypt's most wanted. And so you got like some like giant of the faith who deal with this subject, right? In Mark chapter six, you have the disciples. This is another really cool story. They see Jesus multiplying the bread and the fish, and literally thousands are fed, okay? And the disciples, the Bible says that they get on a boat to cross over and to go to another place, and they face a little storm, and they were all freaking out. Why? Because fear always chooses you. So if you're dealing with fear... I want you to know you're not the only one that struggles with those worries, with that panic attack, with that anxiety. Here's a second fact about your fears. Fear goes away when power or, or love is present, okay? When God's power and God's love is present in your life, and it doesn't always have to be. Just because you're a Christian doesn't mean that you're always experiencing God's power in your life and God's presence in, in your life, okay? It is available to you, but I know when there is sin in my life, I'm not experiencing God's presence in that, in that moment. And when I don't have a connection, and I can preach the best message in the world, but my connection with God is an intimate thing that just has to happen on a daily basis. And so God's uh, uh, fear goes away when power and love is present. So let me tell you a true story. I won't mention any names because I don't want to embarrass my friend but this is a, something that happens back in the 1950s okay and so um, just, just saying it like that now you're thinking who is he talking about okay don't, don't go there but true story true story friend of mine who um, he said when he was in, in uh, fifth grade um, lived right across the street from his school and um, he said that one day after school after his last class uh, he had an eighth grader that came and was kind of bullying him Okay, and his, his other, so to, to a fifth grader, an eighth grader is like a giant, right? So this kid, this eighth grader comes in, pulls out a knife, okay, pocket knife, and he's intimidating the fifth graders, okay? Enough to where he says, my friend says, I just ran home, I was in tears, I mean, I was, you know, like, I just didn't know what to do, I was scared for my life. 
his dad comes in, pulls into the driveway, and asked him, asked the fifth grader, what, hey, what, what's going on? What, why are you, he could tell that something was wrong. And he's like, nothing, dad, I'm good, you know, but he's like, no, 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 I know, the parents know, right? Like, I know something's going on, um, and, and the fifth grader says, well, I had this kid, this eighth grader, who pulled out a knife on me, and I got scared. He says, get in, get in the car. They drove through the school, found the eighth grader. Dad gets out of the car, the fifth grader, you know, his boy is like right behind him, you know, still a little bit, kind of you know, shaking up by the whole situation. Dad looks at the acre and says, hey, my son said that you, um, that you scared him. And the eighth grader kind of being a little bit of a jerk, and he's like, oh, come on, man. We're just playing around. We're just, you know, just horsing around, just uh, having a little bit of fun. And then dad goes, dad goes um, no, actually, because the kid was dismissing, right, this, this missive of, of the father. He's like, dad, go, dad goes, well, I just want you to know um, that he was really, like, he's not like this, and he, this is, like, it really scared him, so please don't do that, and the, the, the eighth grader is like, come on, man, we're just messing around, you know, he didn't, wasn't, wasn't paying, wasn't taking it seriously, and um, that goes, okay, I understand what you're saying, but I just want you to know, next time you do this, you're not going to be dealing with my son, you're going to be dealing with me, immediately, the little boy, you know, kind of gets like, uh, you know, there's my dad, you know, and nobody's going to mess with me. Now, I tell you that to say this. When power is present, fear goes away. And, and so I don't know what message God has for you today, but I hope is this. If you're a Jesus follower, when the enemy comes after you, you have to know that Jesus comes in and he says, if you're going to mess with my boy, you're going to have to go through me. If you're going to go after my girl, I just want you to know you're going to have to get some of this. The Bible puts it like this. Let's put it on, on the screen. Uh, the Bible says, perfect love. Help me out, church. Let's read it together. Perfect love, what? <laughs> Cast out all fear. Perfect love. Cast, and that's, you serve a God who loves you. Who says, you have nothing to worry about. I got you. You have a God who says, hey, get in the car with me. We're going to go find that eighth grader, and we're going to tell him kindly not to mess with you. And if he doesn't pay attention, next time I'm going to show him who's your, who's your dad. Perfect love cast out all fear. Now think of it this way. What causes a mother who has a child in a burning, business, in a burning building, what causes a mom to run through, to break through a police line a line of firefighters and go into a building that's burning to rescue her child. Is it logic? No. Love does that. So love has a power to deal with your fears. Fear goes away when power of love is present. Let me show you kind of how this plays out in this story. Verse 13. It says, but Moses told the people don't be afraid just stand still and watch what the Lord and watch the Lord excuse me and watch the Lord rescue you today I love this I love this don't miss it the Egyptians you see today I love this I <laughs> it, it, to me this is a picture of a father standing up for his children uh, and I don't think that this is just, we're not just talking about the, the Israelites today, but, but God specifically says the Egyptians you see today, you will, ne will never be seen again, okay? This is, you know, a lot of times we have this picture of Jesus being so meek and so humble and turned the, the cheek, you know, and you don't do, and you know, you don't, no, 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 no. This is a God who is furious. This is a God who will protect you at any cost. Look at the next verse, verse 14. The Lord himself. This is a promise that I believe God has for you, okay? And so, so please, I, I hope that do your part, right? Like filter the message through your greatest need right now. Because I think this is what God is saying. The Lord himself will what, church? Will fight, what? Help me. Fight for you to stay calm. Now, let me just say this, kind of a little bit of a side note, okay? Um, but it's important. I think it's important. So listen to this. If you and I, if we would just learn to fear God, 
you know, the Bible says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, right? The beginning of the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. If you and I, if we would just learn to to hold him in high esteem, to revere him above all else, it would take care of all your fears. The the fear of God is the cure to every other fear that you have in your life. So let's review real quick, and we'll, we're almost done. Fear always chooses you, number one. Number two, fear goes away when power or love is present. And number three, last point, the first step in overcoming fear is actually the hardest. The first step in overcoming that fear that you're dealing with is actually, what is the first step in overcoming fear? What do you think is that? What's the first step? If you're gonna overcome fear, what is the first step? You have to confront it. That's, that's actually the hardest step. You have to overcome. It's what I call you have the, the law of inertia, right? You, you've studied this probably. Um, Newton, Newton's first law of motion, the law of, of inertia, it says an object at rest remains at rest unless it's acted upon by an unbalanced force, okay? So this cup right here, you know, an object at rest remains at rest unless it's influenced by another force, right? It's not going to do anything unless it's the, the law of inertia. Let me kind of illustrate it like this, okay? Pick a fear in your mind. Just pick any fear, okay? I'm going to pick the fear of failure because it's, it's one that I struggle with, okay? But you pick your own, okay? So the fear of failure, um, the cure for the fear of failure is not success, a lot of times, whatever that fear that you have is, a lot of times we think that it's the opposite. Like, oh, if I can, you know, if you're a failure, if I could just have success, I'd be good. Okay, that's, what, that's my fix. But actually, nothing could be further from the truth. The, the cure to the fear of failure is actually failure in small enough doses so that you can build up immunity. It's kind of like when you were a kid and you, were, you got your vaccines you know, as you were growing up. They don't give you the whole vi virus. They just give you just enough so you can build up immunity. And so this is how you and I, this is how we deal with our, our fears. You have to confront them, whether it's the fear of rejection, whether it's the fear of intimacy, maybe it's the fear of, of failure or fear of, you know, like you, you don't do social situations that brings you anxiety. You don't want to, the, the worst thing that you can do is avoid it. Like if you run from it, it's gonna be magnified in your mind. It's gonna be like that secret monster, right, in the closet that's hiding in the closet when you go to bed. The more you try to avoid it, the more you try to escape it, the bigger it actually becomes. And so the cure is for you to expose yourself to that fear in small enough doses so you can have small wins and build up immunity. Now, I'm not giving you some sort of like crazy like modern psychology. This is what God says. Look at it. Look at scripture. Verse 15. Then the Lord said to Moses. Watch this, watch this. Then the Lord said to Moses, why... Are you crying out to me? Tell the people to get moving. So they have the Egyptians on the one hand. You have the, the Red Sea on the other hand. And they're, you know, they're freaking out. And God's like, why are you talking to me? Don't talk to me. Go ahead and get moving. Now, I know that you want to go back to Egypt. I know that the temptation is to go back to your old life, but I have promised you a better place. There's a land, a promised land that's yours, and all you need to do is you need to keep going forward. You need to get your feet wet. You need to step into that Red Sea, and you're going to wait and see what I'm going to do for you. And so if you don't get anything else, if you don't get anything else out of the message today, I want you to get this. Most of us spend most of our lives waiting for God to split up the Red Sea. But maybe, just maybe, God is actually waiting for you to get your feet wet. Right? I'll close with this. Uh, I don't know if you've seen the movie Ford versus Ferrari. There's a scene where Carol Shelby, the race car driver, played by Matt Damon, 
He's saying when you're a car, when you're a race car driver and you're going so many miles an hour, there's all kinds of fears, right? He says that there's a point when you're going 7,000 RPMs, just everything just fades away. Like the machine just disappears. All of a sudden you have a body just moving in space and time. So it's that moment where everything fades away, where everything disappears, where you don't even notice a machine, where you have all kinds of fear. That moment is right there, 7,000 RPM. And when you're in that place, the only thing that matters is this question. Who are you? I, I don't know what Moses was going through. I don't know what was happening in his brain. I mean, I'm a leader. I lead a few people, definitely not a couple billion people, but but I wonder if his mind was racing, if it was going 7,000 RPMs. What do I do? What do I tell them? They're, they're, you know, they're complaining. What's new, right? Like, uh, you know, do we do this? Do we do that? You know? And of all the things that God could have said to Moses, says lean into your fear step into the water why are you crying out to me keep going march ahead and I wonder if Moses if he had a flashback to that burning bush experience when he didn't want to go back and he was afraid and he asked God a great question he says who am I who am I? Why do you pick me? Who am I? It's a great question. And that's a question that I think all of us need to ask ourselves. Let me answer it for you. If you're a Jesus follower, you're a child of the Almighty, protected by His power, provided for supernaturally by His immeasurable love for you. So with heads bowed and eyes closed, I don't know what step of faith you need to take, but I do know this. The first step is usually the hardest. You got to overcome this, this thing, this law of inertia by exercising initiative. You have to get your feet wet. And it's the fear of the unknown, right? You overcome fear by exercising faith. So maybe if you need marriage counseling, it's, it's like, oh man, it's so hard. I don't want to get into those waters. But it could save your marriage. Maybe you're here and you're like, I'm trying to lose weight. It's so hard, especially if you've already gotten your feet wet in the past and you're like, I've tried it before. It's even harder when you have to try again, a second time, a third time, right? Maybe you're here and you're trying to resolve some conflict with your family or you're training for, for a marathon or you're trying to lose weight or you're you know, writing a book. I don't know, what, I don't know what, what God has for you. But I know that the first step is always the hardest. But if you do, if you, if you want God to do the supernatural, you got to do the natural part. You got to do the part that's... And just because fear chooses you, you're not going to let it dictate your decisions. And so I wonder how many in this room would say, Pastor, would you pray for me? Or actually, those of you even watching online, Pastor, would you pray for me? There's something that has just been worrying me. Would you pray for me? wonder any hands like that yep all over the room I believe all over online pastor I have there's just this thing that's just gripping like just choking me and I don't know what to do you pray for me anyone else father God you see the hands you know the hearts thank you for reminding us that we're not weird we're not different fear just comes after us regardless of person regardless of the miracles that we've experienced in the past. Thank you for the reminder that fear does go away when power and love is present. So, God, there's nothing greater than your love and your power in our lives. God, if there's sin in our lives, God, please remove it. Please forgive us. Give us a new mindset. May we focus on you, God so that we can walk with that confidence knowing that you your spirit lives in us and God thank you for reminding us that the first step is always the hardest like the old saying if we want to walk in water we got to get out of the boat so God I pray that we would take the initiative to face 
our fears. Whether it's a, a call that we have to make, whether it's a co difficult conversation, whether it's having the faith in the midst of a, a healthy, a, a, a health situation, whether it's it's trusting you with the next cell or with the next team member, whether it's releasing control. God, help us, help us to receive the message that you gave Moses. To stop crying out and praying, oh Lord, we need help. And just, just move forward. We need you, Father. We need your power. We need your love. We need your presence. Help us, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's all stand.